Good morning, and welcome to the final pregame press conference for the college football playoff at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Please turn off all cell phones. Today's press conference features head coach Kalen DeBoer from the University of Washington and head coach Steve Sarkeesian from the University of Texas. At the conclusion of this press conference, we will have photo opportunities with the coaches as well as the All-State Sugar Bowl trophy and representatives of the bowl. We'd like to start with a brief opening statement from Coach DeBoer. Yeah, you bet. Good morning. Um, just uh, great to be here. It's been an awesome week. Uh, our guys, uh, I asked them yesterday, uh, and they said it's uh, been flying by. So I guess that's a good sign. They're having fun and uh, enjoying the moment that comes along with uh, being in this position. So i um, proud of the way our guys have handled the work, uh, whether it be before we got here or once we arrived. And, uh, you know, just uh, ready to play. You know, it's a, a long month, a lot of work. Uh, Coach Sark and I were just talking uh, about uh, everything that happens here in December, but it's uh, it's been a great month for our guys and, um, you know, leading up to this game. But I also want to congratulate Coach Sarkeesian uh, just uh, with the work he's put in. We played a year ago, and uh, you can just see the, the growth and and uh, development of the football team he's, he's uh, overseeing. And, um, you know, the staff's obviously done a great job there. So uh, we're looking forward to, a, you know, a great battle. Um, you know, it's uh, going to be a, certainly a challenge. And um, Coach Sark's done a great job of getting uh, his team to this point here this year. So, Thank you, Coach. And now Coach Sarkeesian. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I think a lot of what I'll have to say is going to echo Coach DeBoer. But uh, uh, this has been a great week for us. Um, I'd just like to thank the Sugar Bowl, uh, their representatives. The hospitality has been tremendous. Uh, the, the efficiency that we've been able to work with at the hotel, uh, at the Superdome to, to make our players' lives as seamless as, as possible. To enjoy the experience is, uh, has definitely you know, shown, shown out to be that way. Um, I, I, do, I do, again, echo Coach DeBoer. This, is, this has been a, uh, a lot this month, uh, so it's finally fun to be a day away from the ball game. I know that uh, our players are excited to play in the game. Uh, they're looking forward to it. Uh, they, they feel like they've earned this opportunity to be in this position, and, and they're, they're excited for it. I, I would say, as far as the University of Washington, Coach DeBoer, they got a heck of a team. Uh, we, we know that firsthand from a year ago. Uh, got a ton of respect for, for that program, that university, and my time there, uh, but, a, a, but even more so for the job that they've done uh, over the past couple years. Uh, they've assembled a great team, a great staff. It shows on tape. Uh, they, they win a lot of games. They win a lot of close games. I think that shows a sign of leadership and culture that they have there. And so it's going it's to be a great challenge. It's going to be a great game. Um, and what a setting for college football, um, you know, primetime Monday night with, uh, with all the eyes on us. Thank you, Coach. And now we'll open up the floor to questions. Please wait for the microphone to ask your question. And once again, please identify yourself by name and media outlet. And we'll start. Right here on the in the left side on the aisle. Good morning, Steve. Eric Henry Horns, twenty four seven, was speaking with Jordan Winton twice throughout the week, and he said something. I want to get your thoughts. And he said a lot of the young guys on this team they're cognizant of the moment. They aren't taking this moment for granted. They're understanding that it, it, they don't have two or three years to try to get back in this position. They're cognizant of what they can accomplish this year. I was wondering if you could expand on Jay Witt's comments a little bit. Well, I think that you know to get to get to this stage uh, in a season is is really hard to do. You know, there's only four of us left, and uh, the, the the four teams left are, are all very good football teams. Um, and there's probably another six or seven teams that all are saying we should be in that position and and watch what we would have done. And so, like I'm saying, I think ourselves, University of Washington, we've earned the right to be in this ball game. Um, and it's, a, it's an unbelievable opportunity, not just for this season, but I think for anybody throughout their career, whether you're a player or a coach, because you never know when you get this opportunity again. And so um, I think his, his messaging is, if I'm, if I'm understanding it correctly, is like cherish the moment, cherish the opportunity, don't take it for granted because you never know. You could have a, we could have a great team next year or two years from now, but because the way the chips fall, you don't get into this Final Four. So. Uh, and I understand that the playoff is, is looking to change and expand in the next year or two. And however that looks, none of us really know. So to be in this position um, this season and today, I think is one that we definitely don't want to take for granted. We want to cherish the moment and, and make the most of it. 
right side on the aisle. And please identify which coach you're <coughs> asking the question. He talked about the uh, guys getting really dialed in 24 hours before the game. What do you do to get dialed in? I relax. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm, uh, I, 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 I get dialed in by being around our players, being around our coaches, um, you know, finding my own rhythm, my own routine. But, uh, you know, I'm not the guy that, that wakes up at 4 in the morning and goes for a 10-mile run. I can promise you that, you know. I, I just look at me. So um, I just kind of go with the flow, and that, that gets me dialed in. When, when I find our own rhythm and I see our players in their rhythm and our coaching staff and, and everybody on board, um, that, that kind of gets me in the, the space of it's time to go. And, and we got a long way to go still. You know, this 745 kick, um, there's, a, there's a lot of time between now and then. And I think that's one thing that, that we, we need to be aware of is, is not trying to get too high too soon, right? You, you have to build for this. And so, um, you know, hopefully we're in the right frame of mind when that ball's kicked off. We'll go to the left side along the aisle. Yogi Roth, Pac-12 Network, uh, really for both of you, if we were to walk around your hotel tonight and talk to members of your staff, your players, and we were to ask them, hey, what's the philosophy of the program? What matters most around the program? What do you think they would say within both of your respective programs? Yeah, I think, um, you know, hopefully our guys would, would feel like it's a player-led program. Um, it's one where the, the coaches give the direction and, and show – you know, the roadmap to success and, um, you know, show what accountability looks like, show, you know, provide opportunities where we can build family amongst and a brotherhood amongst our team. Um, but that in the end, uh, our programs brought to life because of the the uh, ownership that our guys have in how we do things and what we do. And that accountability isn't just coming from the coaches, that's from the players to each other. So um, I would hope that they would say player led um, that uh, there's a culture of, um, you know, um, family, uh, accountable, toughness, um, you know, and everything that we do both on and off the field. Yeah, I would say for us, I would say I, I think I would imagine one of the first things out of the mouth, mouths would be our culture. Uh, I know that because the players have put so much time and effort into our culture, um, I think that they take a lot of pride uh, in that. Uh, so I would imagine that would be one of the first things out of the mouth. And, and I'd say the second thing would probably be the standard. Uh, they understand there's a standard to which we do things here uh, on and off the field, in the classroom, in the community, whatever that is, uh, that, that they hold each other to. And so th those would probably be two of the first things that would come out of the mouths of the majority of our players. We'll stay on the second, uh, the left side and along the aisle. Yeah, hi, Ashley Adams, Pac-12 Network. Uh, Kaylin DeBoer, first of all, congratulations. I, I'm curious, it's watching your team, it seems to me that they thread this really delicate needle of being able to lock in and have this complete intense focus and yet also play free and loose and with joy. I, I just wonder how you, I don't know if it's you cultivate a culture where you are playing with that freedom and that joy, but also being able to keep the pedal all the way down and, and how rare is it? Yeah, um, I think uh, it always comes down to communication. And we are very intentional, um, not just in season, but out of season when the work needs to be done. Um, the guys always say the work is the work. And you know, being able to flip the switch from having a great time in the locker room before you walk out on the football field for practice and being able to flip that switch and go to work and understanding that the preparation is what's going to lead to confidence and your success and production on game days. Um, you know, so I think that's, that's a big piece of it is just um, our guys, you know, really, you know, us communicating and talking about it, being intentional. And, uh, you know, the maturity of our football team, I think, also um, helps us maybe go above and beyond um, maybe most teams. You know, they, they've put a lot into this. They've invested a lot of time. We have nine sixth-year guys in the program that have poured a lot into this program. Um, you know, UW, uh, even other six-year guys that uh, – have maybe joined us, uh, Michael Penix, for example. And so uh, these guys, uh, you know, don't take anything for granted, much like the question that was asked earlier. They uh, are certainly um, very, you know, cognizant of the moment we're in. Um, they've worked hard to get to this spot. They've made sacrifices to stick around another year and uh, get to this uh, Final Four and this opportunity to compete for a national championship. 
I will stay on the left side in the middle. Uh, Lindsay Plotkin, the Daily Texan. Uh, for Coach Sark, how have you been able to keep your players focused with such a long break after the Big 12 championship and this week being here in New Orleans? Yeah, I think a couple things that we've done over this month is tried to compartmentalize the month. Um, you know, when we got out of the Big 12 championship game, uh, I felt like we needed almost two full weeks to, one, recover. Um, that, that was a long grind. That was a long season. It was a physical season. We had bumps and bruises just like every other team in the country. Two, we were heading into finals, and I wanted to make sure that our guys did a great job finishing up school um, with papers and, and taking their finals. Uh, and three, uh, I think they needed a little time away from us, too. <laughs> you know, as, as players just and coaches, when you go through that long of a season through August, sometimes getting away a little bit and then coming back together was important. So uh, we did that for almost the first two weeks. Um, we came back together uh, and then had almost training camp-like practices or spring ball-type practices where it wasn't about game planning. Uh, it was just keeping our competitive juices flowing and going against one another good on good. Um, and then we started to get into the game plan and we started to give it to them kind of in, in, in small pieces uh, to keep them hungry for more. Um, and then we took a little bit of a break for Christmas and everybody kind of went home to see their families. And then when we came back here, it was, it was all into this was a business trip. Um, but in the end, I want to make sure that guys enjoyed their time here and I appreciate the leadership uh, on our team um, for what these guys are doing. You know, two different times this week, I've kind of gone down by the player hospitality suite in the evening, and um, it almost feels like our entire team is in there together. And as a coach, you know, that's, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that bond. You're looking for that connectivity um, with your team. Um, we, we don't have a bunch of kind of lone wolves out there running around. Our team is sticking together. Um, and I, to me, like I said, I think that, that speaks to our culture, that these guys are focused on the task at hand and they're, and they're doing it together. We'll stay on the left side. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Steve, would you call Coach DeBoer a big trick play guy? And uh, everybody knows that you've thrown touchdown passes to your defensive tackles. Do you go back to his Sioux Fall days to check out what he's running? <laughs> Well, I'd call Coach DeBoer a good coach. <laughs> I'd start with that. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, schemes. Um, and they tax you a lot of ways uh, from the, the run game to the, the, the you know, precision passing game to the play action pass down the field shots to the trick plays. And I think that's a sign of a really good coach that it, He's got, he's got versatility to their scheme, and they, they keep you on your toes. You have to defend all of that. And I think, like I said, I think that's a sign of a really good offensive football team. That's a sign of a really good coach, which, which you know, Coach DeBoer is, and he has been throughout his career. And it definitely shows up uh, with this team at Washington. They've got the scheme, uh, and they've got the players to execute it. And, and I think, you know, put those two things together, that's why they're a very dangerous team. We'll go to the right side in the far back. Chip Patterson, CBS Sports. This question is for both coaches. Uh, you mentioned coming in here that you've been talking about the last month and everything that you have to balance. When the playoff expands, that first round is going to start on December 20th, which interestingly enough was the early signing period. So do you have any suggestions to the other coaches and the other staffs that are going to have to go through trying to balance uh, everything that goes into a busy December? Um. I, I, I don't know. Uh, th this, was, this was really challenging, especially those first two weeks uh, coming out of the conference championship games, which, which we obviously both played in. Um, I'd have a hard time trying to imagine having to prepare for a playoff game and have signing date and talking to players on your own team about if they're thinking of going in the portal, trying to look at who's going in the portal from other schools. Um, having other coaches that just got new jobs, trying to hire coaches off your staff. Um, so that there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot in that month. And so uh, I'm hopeful people that are, that are a lot smarter than, than me uh, can figure out a, a, a calendar that best suits what college football is today. I think the calendar that we had was very good for the original model, uh, but that model has changed dramatically um, early signing period, change it. 
the portal changed it. But because of early signing period, coaches are getting fired earlier so that schools can hire new coaches to recruit to that early signing period, which now exposes your own coaching staff to getting to getting hired and, and going somewhere else. So there's a lot of moving parts going on right now in college football that I hope uh, people are people are sitting down and, and really being thoughtful to what is best for our sport right now in the timing of some of these things. I don't have all the answers. I don't pretend to right now, uh, but I do know it was it was taxing um, for us, and I, I think to, to speak for Coach DeBoer on this one, I think for them as well. Um, that that I'm hopeful um, it's only gonna it's only gonna be more with an earlier game. So hopefully they can they can figure out a better mechanism to get all this done. You saw how quick I was to push that question to Coach Sark, right? Um, I, I thought uh, some great explanation of kind of what we've been through as well in December here. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we're so in the moment right now with what our season is and the schedule is now. But I know thinking ahead and understanding that a year from now there will be another game added um, here in December earlier, um, you start thinking about those things. and. Just like Coach Sark said, I, you know, I don't have the answers right now. Um, certainly, I think as, as coaches, we need to be open to um, being working together um, here in the in the week in the months ahead. You know, to have input and and uh, come up with ways to try to always improve it. And I think it's, you know, you always got to think that it's going to evolve and having tweaks here and there every year. Um, because there isn't, isn't a, probably a perfect model. Uh, you just uh, live and learn and try to continue to improve things. So um, again, I don't have the answer either right now. Um, it was a, a crazy month, uh, especially the first probably three weeks. And uh, you know, like Coach said, you know, get, getting ready to play a game on December 20th, um, you know, one that means something as far as going to a, working your way to a national championship, um, you know, that that uh, seems pretty taxing, uh, just thinking about that, uh, that component and that, that possibility. All right, we'll stay on the right side along the aisle. Roger Wallace, KXAN TV Austin. Coach Sark, with this Washington team, um, what are some of the keys you need to see your, from your guys on both sides to combat what they do? Well, I, I think the first part, you know, one thing that gets lost in when you, when you watch Washington, you know, everybody wants to talk about Michael Penix, the receivers, and, and the, the high-flying explosive plays and all that. This is a physical team. Um, and so I, I think our, the level of physicality in which we play the game is important uh, in this ball game. Um, I, I think naturally they're, in a, they're a big play explosive offense. How do we try to minimize those uh, to the best of our ability? How do we on our end try to create some of those? Um, you know, this is a very opportunistic defense. They create turnovers, protecting the ball. The ball will be critical. Um, and then and then knowing that having a month layoff, that our players can find their rhythm in the game as quickly as possible, uh, having not played for, for about a month. Who are the left side? <coughs> I'm Mike Burrell, Seattle Times. Uh, for Kalen, I'm just curious, you know, as you go into uh, – the game tomorrow and, and tonight, what your temperament is like. I mean, as you're getting ready for bed tonight or whatever it may be, I mean, are, are the butterflies starting to crop up or are there nerves there? How would you describe as a coach who's going into a stage like this, what you're feeling in this moment? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you're just uh, trying to make sure that all the preparation for the guys tonight and, and we'll have some meetings, you know, this evening, uh, this afternoon and evening and a uh, chance to get together as a team and, and you know, um, I think there's always perspective, right? And I think that's what's helped our team and I referred to the maturity that we have, uh, but understanding what the keys are to the game and, and the things and what that looks like tomorrow with our schedule leading up to kickoff um, and just them feeling confident that there's gonna be nothing that's coming their way that they, uh, they weren't alerted to. Um, you know, the preparation for the game uh, has been ongoing for a couple weeks now. And so, you know, they're, they're pretty well versed in what to expect and, what our what our plan is, but um, you know, I, I just I hope our guys, you know, just like we've always talked, trust and believe in the preparation they've had, and yeah, there there should be a, a few butterflies and just probably more of a excitement, you know, to get to kickoff. Uh, I think having done this for so many years, you, you uh, get to that first snap, that first play, and then you just kick into coach mode, player mode, and you know, you're back to the doing what you've done for hundreds of games, you know? And so 
Um, obviously, there's more at stake, uh, which makes it you know more exciting, and uh, you know all the pageantry around the game. Um, you know, certainly that doesn't fall on us and, and get lost there. But uh, man, it's it comes down to playing the game when it when the kickoff happens, and you know um, there's excitement around it. But we're got we're, our guys are are gonna you know hopefully be in the mindset to just cut it loose and let it be, and and uh, trust and believe in who we are, and and let the results take care of themselves. The back left side. Stand up so you guys can see me. Uh, Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. For both of you, unique paths here. When you look back on your careers, was there ever a point maybe when you were riding buses in South Dakota or you had a setback in your career like you did Sark, uh, where you thought this wouldn't be possible for me to be in this position? Maybe you looked at the playoff game and thought, mm, I wonder if I would ever, I'll ever be able to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, I did. Jeez. <laughs> I was out of I was out of work. Couldn't get a, couldn't get an interview. Never mind a job. Never mind thinking about the college football playoffs. So, um, sure, sure it did. And um, I think that's what makes part of this journey with this team this year probably so gratifying. Um, you know, naturally you you appreciate the commitment um, that 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 these guys put forth and all of that. But when you when you take a moment to reflect, like I'm like I'm doing right now. Uh, you think back to that moment when you, like I said, you're at, you don't have a job, you can't get an interview, and you're you're just trying to get back into the into the profession. Never mind thinking about being here with an opportunity to go play for a national championship. So um, I think part of that puts things into perspective in that you know you appreciate the opportunities that you get, um, you appreciate the people that you're around every day, uh, and you try to pour into those people, and and when you pour into them. Um, sometimes you get results like this and you get on teams like this and you get to be part of special seasons like this. So um, very grateful and thankful for the opportunity here um, from the University of Texas, but also uh, from the opportunity and, and appreciation for these players and the staff and the work that they've done to get us to this point. So um, it's fascinating to think, you know, the journey that, that me personally that I've been on to get to this point. But I'm hopeful that my story can serve as some sort of, um, you know, motivation to others. You know, you, it, we don't have to stay where we are in life. Like right? if if we have our goals set on something and and we live a life of you know doing things the right way and um, do the next right thing and treat people well and and work hard, um, be disciplined, be focused, you know, hold yourself accountable, um, be committed to something. Uh, have some mental toughness to overcome the adversity that we have, we can change, right? And life can change, and life can change for the better. And that's no different for our players either. So uh, hopefully I can, I can serve a little bit of a model of that, that uh, you know, we, we can change the narrative for ourselves and, and that we can, we can build towards something even greater than we have right now. And uh, like, like I said, you know, there was a moment there where, yeah, for sure, I thought that way. But uh, not anymore. Here we are. All right, we'll go to the right side in the front row. Uh, Chip Brown with Horns247.com. For both coaches, how have your teams changed the most since you played a year ago? Uh, I think um, probably just another year of being in both offense and defensive systems, special teams as well. I think, um, you know, I think we've uh, continued to improve uh, it with our, our special teams play. Um, I think our our defense, uh, you know, I think the latter part of last season started picking up some steam and uh, has continued just uh, with that consistency here this season. Um, I think offensively we've become, um, you know, not just a pass, you know, pass first and, and only pass. Uh, um, you know, I think at the end of last season we, we got that balance uh, towards the end of the year. And, and this year as we you know, had a new couple of new pieces uh, to the offensive line and, and even at running back. Um, I think here the second half of the season, you know, we're a different team that way as well uh, with, uh, you know, the, the feeling that we can play a physical style of football um, and uh, run and pass equally effective. So, um, you know, I think there, those are the areas. I think just everything is just raised. We've just raised the bar in all areas. Uh, a lot of it has to do with just the continuity of our coaching staff and the continuity of the players that uh, are out there making plays on game day? Yeah, I would say for us, um, probably the maturity of our team has, has really improved. You know, a year ago, 
uh, we were relying on a couple, two or three leaders to kind of lead, um, which we all know, you know, Bijan, Roshan, DeMarvion, those guys were great leaders in our program. Um, and as they moved on, th there, was a, there was a group of guys that had to, that really had to step up. And I, I, I credit them because they, they've done it, you know, whether on the offensive side of the ball, whether it was Quinn, JT, Christian, um, Jake Majors, Jay Witt, uh, Xavier, um, those guys have really stepped up defensively. You know, what Sweat and Murphy have done, you know, where we had Coburn and Morrow a year ago for them to step up, Jalen Ford, um, you know, Jaron Thompson, Jade Barron, those guys have really stepped up and have, have like, I, like I told them going into the season, they didn't just buy into what we were talking about, they elevated it. And I think to me, that's probably the biggest change on our team um, is that. We don't have a, 115 guys looking at three to lead them. I, I feel like we've got 30 to 40 true leaders on this team now um, that it's kind of spread throughout and, and guys are holding each other accountable on a much different level than we were uh, a year ago at this time. We have time for one last question. We'll go to the left side in the front row. Um, Mark Richardson from orangebloods.com. Coach Sarkeesian uh, talked to Jalen Ford, Christian Jones, and. Um, and other guys, and they said like the moment they really started to believe in you guys as a staff it really occurred to that Alabama loss um, the previous year. Um, do you feel like that was the moment that you felt like you got that the guys started to believe um, in it? And if it was, then how important was it? Even though it was a loss, how important was that moment? Well, I think I think naturally, um, you know, in year one was a really t difficult season in that. Um, we were we were trying to we we're trying to turn the ship right in the right direction, uh, and we lost a couple really tough tough games against good teams, um, and we were struggling to kind of get ourselves get our footing back. And you end the season five and seven, you're wondering, um, is this the right path as a player? As a coach, I felt great about what we were doing. I knew it was going to be a process. Um, so when year two came, and we had a great off season, we had I felt like we had a really good roster. Uh, and we played Bama earlier in the year with, with a very talented team with, with Bryce Young and Will Anderson and, the, and that crew. Um, to play them the way that we played them, I think for the players it was like an aha moment in that everything coach is talking about we actually are capable of. Now we have to, we have to put the final pieces together to really learn how to finish. And that was a whole process. That took a whole nother year to really get that done for us. Um, but naturally now I think there is a level of belief uh, in the fourth quarter of these games, when the games are tight, that we can find a way to win, that we're versatile enough to find a way to win uh, in whatever phase, offense, defense, or special teams, to make that play in that, in that critical moment. So um, I do think there's something to be said for playing those types of games early in the season uh, because it does give you, uh, give, give, give you a sense of a little bit of a bar of where you're at, where you need to improve, and what another one of the best teams in the country looks like and how you measured up against them early in the season. Thank you, coaches. At this time, we will set up for photos.